Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, giant circuit breaker. Now I've done circuit breakers before and uh, you can check out those older videos, some of them from back in the day, but I don't think I've ever done one this big. This is a uh, General Electric circuit breaker. It's part of the uh, Spectra RMS series. It's a high break circuit breaker and this one goes up to a maximum of 250 amps. Uh, though it's got a module in it right here that this one is set for 150 amps. And we'll take that out and explore it because that'll be neat. So let's start with basic operation. Right now you can see it's on and the little indicator shows red. And this has three states that it can exist in. It can be on like that or you can pull the thing down and it goes off. You can see it's green now. And then watch right here and you'll see the color change. Right now it's green. For just a brief moment, there was a yellow one. Did you see that? Watch. As we go up through, watch really close. See the yellow? And that snaps into red. Now the yellow is for its third state of operation, which is one you really don't want to see on a 250 amp circuit breaker. But if I press this little red button here, this, it's like a test button, watch right here and you'll see this. Now see how it's down a little bit and it's yellow there? That means tripped. It means that something has caused a fault and the circuit breaker has done its job. And usually if you're reading that, your building has not burned down, which is a good thing. So you can reset this by just pulling this down to off. And it feels like, it feels like you're cocking it. And you are, there's a spring system. And then you can go back to on. So that's pretty much all there is to the operation one. The installation is pretty straightforward. You've got your big screws and you connect in here. There will be a cover here that comes off. I don't know if the cover comes off on the bottom, but three big wires in, three big wires out. So it's designed for a three-phase setup. Let's grab a screwdriver and start digging into it. Hey, hey, we can, we can do better than that. Ha, look at that. New tools. Still getting used to this. Just plastic type screws. I want to see. Oh no, that's part of the whole main cover. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Just relax. Now these are screws going into metal. Here's a neat thing. Notice the difference in the threading. These screws with their machine threads go into metal. There's a little brass insert. These screws with the big angry threads, these go into plastic. They look more like a wood screw. This, I think, oh, that's where they are. that big? About that big? Yep. All right. This is pretty good. Yep. Look at that. There's little plastic plugs. And you give them a, a little bit of a turn. They're like a bayonet plug. You take these out. And you may ask yourself, why would you use an Allen wrench on that? That's such a weird size. It's such a weird Thing, everything else on your Phillips heads, because the Phillips head of stuff is all the parts of the circuit breaker you're not supposed to take off. But you're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen wrench because the connector 
down inside, and I'll let you guys zoom right in and have a look. See the connectors down inside? That's the actual clamp for the wire. And you can see it here. Here's the other side of that. You put the Allen wrench in, and when you turn it, that's what clamps down on the wire. And you need this size Allen wrench to actuate that really big screw clamp. Because it really is just a big bolt. We'll get a better look at it in a bit. I'm going to keep this out. I'm probably going to need it. All right, so we got all that. Now I want to pop off this module here, if I can get it out. Maybe? Ha! Got it. There's a little plug-in module here. And this module turns this circuit breaker into a 150 amp circuit breaker. This is a calibrated module. I wonder what's inside. Resistors. OK. Let's open it right up, get a real look at it. It's kind of a you're not supposed to be opened arrangement here, but I'm good at those. I think these will work really well for not supposed to be opened. Got it. So that's what's inside. It's a really simple little circuit card with three really simple resistors. So that little module, which they probably charge you 50 bucks for. Um, is what determines it. It goes in here and plugs in. There's a set of really chintzy contacts, but it works. So there's that. Should have just about all the screws out. Oh, no. We bend these down, and there's more screws inside. can't get it down in the hole. There's a screw down there. It's a really long, skinny Phillips. This might do. It was kind of cool that touching that screw made this trip. Hmm. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's see what I can... I've got to get those two out. Will you fit? Not that one. There we go. That's the whole front panel right off. Oh, wow. Look at this. There's circuitry in our circuit breaker. So we've got an adjustment here. We can take that off, and under it, it's just a pot. This is the socket for our little circuit board. You can see there's fingers on the bottom. It just sits exactly like that. Some wire wrap connections, some interesting potting. Like everything's conformal coated. And And the whole circuit card is pretty thoroughly in there. I still can't get in enough to get that screw. Out. And there's no other screws anywhere. This is the point where I'm going to put on safety glasses 
because there's a lot of springs and stuff in here, and I like having eyes. So I gotta solve that screw. So I think that's my holdup, and it's too narrow of a channel to get into. I'm going to cut out this little part of the case. Now I'm down to it. Got it. Okay. Now what will that let me do? That's a tricky puzzle. Oh, wow. Check this out. That's why it tripped. This is a solenoid. So this is part of the tripping mechanism. Some circuit breakers, some circuit breakers are activated uh, thermally. Some circuit breakers are activated electromagnetically. There's a lot of different ways that these work. So this one, you can see, as you do that, that trips the mechanism down inside, just like this does over here. And we can test this. Let's see if we're right. I'll reset it. Hey! So now it's set, and when I let go of this, oh, wait, we gotta set it. So that's on, and that's tripped, just by letting this fall down. So we'll reset the circuit breaker. I gotta hold that up to do it. And then when I go all the way up, so our breaker's on. Now watch my thumb. If I let this come off, that's where it trips. Cool. All right, now how do we get in the next step? Well, now that we got that out of the way, we can get the card out of the way. So there's our circuit card. Foam plastic combination. I thought it was mica at first, but it's not. It's like a plastic and a foam. Yet another screw reveals itself. All right. I don't see any more screws anywhere on top. So this is kind of scary because I don't know what's going to come flying out at me. I have, I have, I have somewhere. You're what I want. There we go. So that's just a molded case, a really nice mold. Money was spent. And now we're into the actual unit. And we can see we've had some water infiltration because this right here is all rusted. 
So we can see a lot of rust up on top, and we can see the circuit breaker has actually been used because there's some charring. That's where this is part of an arc arrestor here. You can see there's been some actual arcing. So take that out. Take that one out. This is an arc arrestor. You can see some charring down on the bottom. So the side poles X and Z come right out. Y is a little trickier because I got, I got stuffs in the way. You going to stay down? Okay. You going to not eat my hand would be nice. Cool. Okay. There's Z or Y. Now we're down into, see, I see a lot of arc arrestor stuff. I think these are the actual contacts. These are the sensing coils here. Now let's see if we can get one right out. Most of the stuff should, like there'll be an order to it, lift out. As he braces himself. All right, let's take these out. We'll take apart any screws we can find. can wiggle it. I like how parts just keep jumping out of this thing. Can I get you out? Yes, but I got to screw it in to take it out. Okay. See, I told you we'd need this. Doubted me. So we're going to screw this in so that the top of the screw is below the thing. And I'm just going to run all three of these down real quick while I'm at it because I'm pretty sure that's going to be a theme. Now I got to bring them all the way down, but not down so far as to be tight. So we'll back off a quarter turn. Now these three slide out the bottom. And here is that big bolt I was telling you about for the terminal clamps. Why, why are you giving me a problem? Can't you be like all the other kids? You were being good. All the other guys went right out. Why can't you do it? There we go. All right, so we got those three out, and the three on the bottom are already out. It may really be that simple. Here's the scary part. This is the big spring system here. It's the big spring trip, which is basically a mouse trap that wants to eat my fingers. And now you can see, this is kind of cool. Down in here, those are the contacts down in the bottom. And when you move the lever, that brings these down. So the circuit's open, the circuit's closed. And electricity goes 
in through the whole thing and then out the other one. As it goes through, it passes through these three coils. And these are basically a current transformer. So the wire, the main conductor through, is one winding of the transformer. And it's just a straight line through. And these coils here are the secondary of the transformer, and they come out to these. And these connect to our little circuit board. So this is the control sensing system. And these are the actual sensors. So let's, let's keep going in. Can I just pull the whole thing out? Probably not. That would be too easy. You can't have it be easy. Well, that's interesting. Pull these guards out. And now I can see the three screws and how to access them. Cool. And now we got to pull those three screws out. Why is there always one? Keep spinning it till it falls over. Gotcha. All right, now something new will move. Ha ha, look at that. All right, check these out. These are the actual contacts of the circuit breaker. And there's got to be a flexible electrical connection that'll still take the whole 250 amps. So you can see these contacts are soldered on here. And there's a flexible, big, soft, thick copper conductor, just a piece of cable there, that lets this move. And the whole assembly is hinged and everything. It's really nice. This, is, this was not a cheap part. So we'll set that out there. Now, These are potted in, so I don't think I'm going to get those actual contacts out because they're, they're actually potted right down in. Like that's, you're into hammer time. But I might be able to get these out if I can apply the right force in the right direction with the right tool. Yep, that does it. Okay, so we have to. Gotcha. All right. So one of them's on the floor, but they're all the same. And this, you can see here where we got all of our water infiltration. There's a lot of rust on those laminations. But we'll use the, the clean, sexy one here as our example. And you can see, here's our main conductor right here. It goes right through. And then there's two coils that are joined together. And that's our transformer, our current transformer, that measures the actual amperage through the thing. And we could test this. If we hook this up to a power supply, we could actually measure voltage coming off of here, which would tell us our current. I'm not going to worry about that level of digging into it today. Now that we've got this completely apart, let's talk about how it works and what some of the parts do. Now, normally everything's arranged all inside the case. But here we can take it all apart and really get a look at it. We've got our three sensors here. And those connect to our actual switch, the contactors that open and close. I can't get those out. They're potted in there. That's, 
That's forever. Maybe I can get a part of it out, but I think you can just understand that down inside there are three metal contacts that go out the top. Okay, so for this example, our table will be the contacts. And we've got, this is just the spring for moving the switch, so we don't really need that. And these are the big wire clamps that go down on this end, so we don't, we don't need all of those, but we'll put them in there, why not? Okay. And then we've got our sensor circuit here, and our little trip. And then the rest is really just packaging. Safety stuff to protect people from touching things they shouldn't touch or protecting parts internally from arcing from pole to pole, things like that. So up here we've got these, which are the arc shrouds and arc suppression. Now let's look at what it actually does. The purpose of this device is safety and protection. When too much current, not voltage, current is drawn through a circuit, this at a predetermined amount says we got to turn it off. But it's smarter than that because let's say you have a, a, this, this is a big beefy one, this would completely realistically be put on a, a big motor used in heating and cooling, okay, like a big HVAC system. Well, when that first turns on, it draws a lot of current, way more than it normally does. And it's totally safe because it only does it for a very brief moment. So this is smart enough to say, all right, well, that's more than you're supposed to get, but I'm just gonna, yep, okay, you're cool. And it just waits a couple seconds. And it's smart enough to do that. It knows how much it's drawing, but this little circuit, has a delay built into it. Now the amount that it delays is directly proportionate to how much of an overcurrent situation it's in. If it draws way more than it's supposed to, it, this thing can trip in, frequently they can trip in a fraction of a waveform. If it's just a little bit over, it can, it can tolerate that for a very long time and then let it ease back. Because you want to avoid nuisance tripping. You don't want this to go off when it doesn't need to. But when it needs to, you need it to go off absolutely perfectly every time. And all this does is turn a switch off. That's it. It's, it's a current controlled switch with some twists. Because let's say you got Bob working on the line with his big screwdriver and he does a short phase to phase. Well, two things are going to happen. One, Bob's going to go blind and get screwdriver chunks in his face. Two, that screwdriver is going to create, quite literally, a crowbar load, which is how many amps can we suck out of the wall at once. This is a bad time. And this is how you light cable on fire really quick. So this can sense that because all the power comes in the top, goes through the switch, through the sensors, out the bottom. So it knows any power going through it has to be measured by one of these sensors. So it knows everything going on. And if that current is too high, this can say, no, nope, I'm done. And it doesn't have to be evenly across all three like you get with a motor. It could be just across two like you get if you did it with a crowbar or something. So when these read too much current has passed through here, they tell this, the circuit board, and the circuit board trips the little relay, or the, the solenoid, and when the solenoid trips, these pop up, and it opens a circuit. Now, you've been taught in any electrical class, it's not a good idea to open and close switch gear under load, because that's a really good way to weld a switch shut. Or you can get big arcs and fl arc flash and stuff like that, so it's a bad idea. This is designed to open under heavy load, the absolute maximum load that that line is designed to carry. So when they do that, it's absolutely realistic that there's going to be big arcs and flashing and danger, danger, danger. So what this does is all this stuff at the top 
these thinned enclosures are designed to suck that arc up in and quench it because you want to get the arc out, you want to draw the arc out, and you want to get the arc broken into pieces and dispersed as quickly as you possibly can. And that's exactly what these are for. And there's some really cool stuff involving magnetics that does this because remember the, the arc plasma is an electrical circuit. It, it follows rules, just like uh, it's the exact same thing as how a CRT works. So you can look into that and see how an electron gun works in a CRT and how they aim it. And you can do that electrostatically and electromagnetically. Same concept, which is why you've got these big laminations up in here, this high silicon steel. And these plates are just like in an electric motor where you've got a whole bunch of plates and they're all electrically conductive, but they're all electrically insulated from each other. They coat them in goo and then stick them together. And these, when, in, when this is together, in case this whole thing, they all, they all sit up together and it's all shrouded and shielded and it's all right there, all nice and tight. So that handles that. So you've got arc suppression up on top, the actual contacts, sensors with their bus wires going through them, and then the clamps for the wire out on the bottom. That's the whole thing. It's actually really, really simple when you take it apart. Like how it works, very simple. But all the engineering that has to go into this is really complicated. And it's really elegant that they can get something that's so rugged, that's so important in what it does. Because these things save lives. This device right here for thousands and thousands of people are why they didn't die by sleeping in a burning building. People, tr at this moment, as I make this video, there are millions and millions of lives at stake being, pr being protected by these devices actively every moment. That's really cool when you think about it. So, it can be kind of hardcore to be an engineer. You guys have fun. That's our look inside a big circuit breaker. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.